Hello Blu-ray collectors, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michael and today I want to discuss 2K upscales on 4K discs and then do a small review of Coraline on 4K. I'll leave a timestamp to that review here but I think the first part of the video ties in with it nicely as well. I'll do a quick explainer of the terms real and fake 4K and then give my thoughts on it. It's going to be a long one but hopefully informative. Uh, this topic appears to be a bit of a minefield with lots of caveats, so I'll have to keep it relatively broad, but I hope to bring something new to the conversation, or at least give people a good reason to research their potential 4K releases to make sure they're getting what they pay for. So recently I was looking at a website called 4K Media that lists a bunch of 4K titles and advises if they are real or fake 4K. And when I first started collecting Blu-rays, I would avoid fake 4Ks, believing them to be inferior products, just in general. What the website means by real 4K is that the content on the disc was taken from a 4K source, usually the original camera negative or a high quality film duplicate. And because older films were often shot on 35mm film, a format that in most cases exceeds 4K resolution, a new scan can provide a studio with as much detail and colour as possible, as no upscaling is required. More modern films shot digitally may also be finished in 4K as well. That's real 4K. At this point, I should note that the 4K media site hasn't been updated in a few years, but there is another called DigiRaw, links in the description below. This does the same and also offers information about the audio and HDR. They are good resources, but not necessarily ones to use when deciding whether or not to buy a new 4K discs. Where their information is sourced from is unclear. From what I can gather, they are educated guesses a lot of the time, but I could be wrong on that. They may have sources that they don't declare, but the truth is that only the studios themselves really know what releases are from what scans or digital files of the film. That is to say, don't believe everything you read and instead research each film before you spend 20 to 30 pounds on it or more. So what does fake 4K mean? Well, essentially it means that the studio upscaled a 2K version or digital intermediate of the film Perhaps it was originally shot on digital cameras that could only record a resolution lower than 4K, or perhaps there were a lot of special effects that were only rendered in 2K, which saves a lot of time and money. Um, because of that, the original film negative would have been downscaled to match. This has been common practice since digital cameras and digital ed editing were introduced to Hollywood in the late 90s and became a dominant way to shoot film in the mid 2010s. Most cinemas in the world and most consumers still can't utilise 4K media and in the past studios would be less likely to spend all that extra money creating a 4K master of the film, instead they would finish the film in 2K resolution, which is ideal for most cinemas and for Blu-rays. It's possible for a lot of films with this issue to be rescanned at 4K and to have all the special effects re-rendered or recreated entirely in 4K as well, like the creative team behind the Star Trek Next Generation Blu-rays did. But this is very rare because it costs a fortune to do this. So instead, the studio will use the latest technology to upscale a 2K digital intermediate to 4K and release that, hence why people say this is a fake 4K. Films that are upscaled from 2K can never truly be as sharp or have as much detail as a 4K scan, because upscaling any video is a process that alters the original film. New algorithms and software for upscaling essentially blow an image four times from what it was, and therefore an entirely new version of the film is created. You may not notice it, but until it was ran through upscaling software, that version never existed. But this only tells part of the story as far as I'm concerned, because if you own a 4K TV, and at some point in the future you probably will, then that TV is always upscaling content that isn't real or native 4K. Be it a TV broadcast, a Blu-ray, or even a DVD, it upscales it so it fills the screen, and the amount of pixels in that 4K TV will never change, it will always be a 4K display. If you have a 4K Blu-ray player and want to play a regular Blu-ray through your 4K TV, then the 4K Blu-ray player will have upscaling processors built in that will take a 1080p Blu-ray and blow it up to 4K so it displays nicely on your 4K TV. So with that in mind, the question I ask is, do I think a studio has access to better upscaling software than my Blu-ray player or TV does? And the answer to that is yes, they most certainly do. Of course, Blu-ray players and TVs get firmware and software updates, and they will continue to improve on that. So older upscales, very released by studios, 
may seem less impressive in the future, but at any given time of a new release, you can assume that the studio releasing it has access to better upscaling technologies and that the 4K disc they provide has a potential to be much better than a regular Blu-ray going through your 4K setup at home. I say potential because sadly some studios don't take the appropriate time and care with their 4K releases to ensure they release a quality product to the consumer. So here's my conclusion. A real 4K release can either be amazing or absolutely shambolic, depending on how much time, money, and effort goes into it. A bad scan, bad color timing, poor restoration work, excessive DNR to reduce grain can all result in a very poor release, despite being a real 4K disc. A fake 4K release can also suffer from these issues, and if you want an example of that, then I will link below to Elliot's Lord of the Rings 4K review, where he suggests this is a likely 2K upscale that has some pretty serious issues. It's an excellent and informative video that everyone should watch. But if a company takes care and has the best equipment to hand, and is motivated to produce the best looking disc it can, then a 2K upscale or a fake 4K disc can far surpass any Blu-ray of the film on a 4K home setup, and even produce the definitive version of the film on home media as more and more people upgrade to 4K in the home. These websites are interesting and I'm glad they exist, but they aren't the last word in whether you should pay a large amount of money for a film just because it says 4K UHD on it. They are informative websites, but ultimately they can't tell you very much about any particular release. By knowing if a film is real 4K scanned from a 4K source, what you do know is that it has the potential to be great, with no digital altering of the film. But how many 4K UHDs take advantage of this without ruining the process is something we'll always be debating. With that in mind, let's discuss Coraline on 4K. Now, first things first, I reached out to both Shout Factory and to Leica, who wed the restoration product, asking for clarity. But unsurprisingly, I didn't get a reply. Perhaps because I'm a nobody, perhaps because they just like to keep this information to themselves. Either way, no response. I know the cameras used to film this stop motion movie were 4K, but after researching it, I'm quite confident that they did not go back and recreate the film from the original photography and instead upscaled the 2K digital intermediate that was created in the late 2000s. Working on that likely scenario, this would be a fake 4K disc. So how does it stack up? Well, some technical details first. The video is of course presented in a 4K resolution with Dolby Vision and HDR10. The aspect ratio is 1.85 to 1, which is the original aspect ratio of the movie. So that's good. The audio is presented in Dolby Atmos and Dolby True HD 7.1 surround sound. Some of the problems you may encounter with 2K upscales are things like ringing effects, which give a ghost-like outline to edges. Blocky square sections of the video can also be present if the source isn't of a high enough quality, or other seemingly random visual artifacts can just appear out of nowhere. But I'm pleased to say that if these issues are present on this disc, then I couldn't see it at all. The movie looks spectacular in every regard, and it's clear to me that the team at Leica have done an amazing job and have lovingly created and presented this film. It's truly an excellent disc. The real thrill of watching comes from the excellent Dolby Vision HDR. The colours pop and are so vibrant, it's magical. It's difficult really to put it into words. Of course, it's subjective, but it blew me away. And for a film where colour is this important, I think they absolutely nailed it. It's truly what sets this apart from previous Blu-ray releases. And for fans, I think it makes it an absolute must own. I'd be astounded if this film ever got a better release than this one. As for the audio, well, I only have a Cambridge audio sound base. So it's not a true surround sound setup. For me, it sounded absolutely great because of this, but I've read on the blu-ray.com forum that one user says, if you're using a 5.1 or 7.1 system, then some sound effects have been placed on the wrong channel. So this could be something that puts you off if you have a keen ear for that. I'm glad my setup doesn't have this problem, but it does sound like a strange oversight from the company that produced this release after all the care they took on the video. I don't know if it's true because I've got no way to personally verify it, but also I've got no reason to doubt it. So do go check on that thread on blu-ray.com for Coraline to make up your own mind. A um, little bit of homework for you there. Just a quick note on the disc itself. Obviously, um, if I show you there, it comes with 
the 4K disc, and below this is a Blu-ray of the film. I got very excited because it also comes with a little booklet, and if you know me, you know I really enjoy booklets, but after taking it out, it's it's like five pages, so it's not really anything to write home about, although it is nice that they put it in. So thank you, Shout, for putting something in. I do appreciate that. The slipcover itself is just the same artwork over again which is fine. I don't really care for slipcases. I don't care for slipcases unless they are for some reason limited edition. I think that's really bad and annoying, um, and I'm going to discuss that in a future video about a Kino Lorber release that I've just ordered. That won't be coming with a slipcase, which again I don't care about, but I do care that the slipcases for the film that I've bought are going on eBay for like £100. That is outrageous. We'll get onto that later. So overall, there are many rabbit holes you can go down by researching what it means to upscale older or lower resolution media in an era where more and more people are moving to 4K home setups. But we should always remember that the quality of a release is determined mostly by two things. One, if the source material to make it look great even exists. And two, if the studio producing the disc is willing to stump up the money and give it the time and effort it deserves to present it in the best possible way. In this regard, 4K reviewers are essential reading and watching for any collector before parting with your hard-earned cash. Not just me, all the others. So yeah, overall I'm delighted by this Coraline release, and if you like the film then I highly recommend it. If there was outlined previously in this video, you should check out other reviews as well to make sure I'm not talking rubbish. Because I might be. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Please leave a comment if you'd like to discuss it further. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Every time I see the counter go up, it does get me a little bit more excited and it really does encourage me to keep creating videos. Next time we're going to be looking at second-hand Blu-rays. Uh, these are ones that I bought on the cheap to see if it's worth looking out for them and to find out any problems you could face if you go down this route while building up your collection. I bought five Blu-rays for less than £10 in total for that video and together we're going to take a look at them and draw some conclusions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.